In lesson 11, the students use the mean and the mad to describe data distributions, and I'm going to do a problem with you. So suppose that the number of text messages eight students receive on a typical day is as follows. Okay, they have eight students and the number of text messages that they receive. So the first section asks us to draw a dot plot for the number of text messages received on a typical day with eight students. So I'm going to draw my line for the dot plot. Dot plots are also frequently known as line plots. The number of texts range from 35 to 70. So I'm going to start there, kind of scale 35 to 70, and I'm going to decide to count by fives. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, and of course I'm going to label this because you don't want to just have random numbers. This is number of texts received. And I'm going to title it the number of text messages received on a typical day. Okay, now I'm going to plot. I have 142. I have a 56. I have a 35. I have a 70. I have a 56. I have a 50, I have a 65, and they have another 50. Okay, beautiful. So now I'm going to look, this is my data. This is how it's distributed. I'm going to answer some questions on it. Now part B wants me to find the mean. So hopefully you can take out your calculator, and you can add 42 plus 56 plus 35 plus 70 plus 56 plus 50, plus 65, plus 50. Now I'm going to divide that by 8, the 8 numbers I added. On average, the typical student receives 53 text messages. So now I'm going to go, and I'm going, now I'm going to go, and I'm going to make all of the deviations. And I'm not going to make a huge chart like I used to. I'm just going to try to do this quickly, because the better we get at it, the more quickly you should be able to do it. And I'm going to figure out how far these are all from the mean, okay? 42 is down 11 from your mean. 56 is up 3 from your mean. 35 is going to be down 18 from your mean. 70 is going to be up 17 from your mean. 56 is up 3 from your mean. 50 is down 3. 65 is up 12 from your mean, and 50 is down 3. Okay, now if I was going to find the mad, I would have to take all of these and make them absolute, which means the distance they are from 0. So they're really all becoming positive. So now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to add up all the deviations, 11 plus 3, plus 18, all my positive absolute deviations, plus 17, where am I here, plus 3, plus 3, plus 12, plus 3. And I get 70. And I'm going to divide that by 8. That's going to give me a MAD of 8.75. This is the part that I'm really concerned about students understanding. If your mean is 53, on average, it means the number in your data set range at a deviation on average of plus 8.75 or minus 8.75. And I thought the way students would actually like check their mad here. So they could take out their calculator and you could do 53 minus 8.75. That means your lowest number could be around 44.25. And your highest number on average, remember, so it's not going to be exact, it's going to be somewhere around 61.75, okay? On average, okay? So there, it's pretty, it's pretty close to what we have on average, okay? Question D asks us to describe the data. There's three descriptions. 
symmetrical. The left hand side is equal to the right hand side. It's not always going to look like this bell curve. It could look like this because the left hand side is equal to the right. That's symmetrical. Skewed to the left because your tail is to the left. Or skewed right because your tail is to the right. If I looked at this data distribution, it is symmetrical. Okay, another couple questions. Suppose that the original data set, uh, student three receives an additional five more text messages. Okay. Let's see what I can get rid of here. Student three receives an additional three more text message. So this is going to change to 38. And student four receives five fewer. So student four had 70. We're going to change it to 65. Okay. Without doing any cal calculations, does the mean for this new data stay the same, increase or decrease? Without doing any calculation, I think the mean is going to stay fairly close because we added three here. Oh, I'm sorry, we added five more here. It is going to stay exactly the same because this is a balance, okay? It's plus five, minus five. Now, if we added seven here and eight here, okay, your average would go up because you're adding it to the both of them, okay? So that would be question E, okay? And let me scroll down. I think I made a mistake with the earlier. They added five here, which was 40, and took five away here, which is 65. Sorry about that. So if you add five and take five away, the mean is going to be um, exactly the same because you just added five and took five away. Now, is the MAD going to be the same as the second part of this question? Um, and the MAD... The MAD really should stay the same too since we added and decreased, okay? I hope you're um, watching the Educanon um, with this and answering a couple questions on today's lesson, okay? There's three things you should be learning about in your objectives. Do you understand what the mean is and how to calculate it? Do you understand what the MAD is and how to calculate it? And the third thing is distribution shapes, okay? Good luck on tonight.